Hey guys, uh, this is Dr. Mungli. So today's question is about uh, regulation of uh, blood glucose during fasting condition under the influence of glucagon. So the question is about hepatocytes and renal cells are able to contribute towards blood glucose regulation because of the presence of which one of the following enzymes which is generally not found in other cells. Okay. So there is a speciality of hepatocytes and renal cells, especially in terms of glycogen, which is broken down under fasting condition under the influence of glucagon is glycogen is broken down into glucose 1-phosphate and glucose 1-phosphate will be converted into glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate later it will be converted into glucose. And the enzyme that converts glucose 6-phosphate into glucose is done by glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. And this glucose 6-phosphatase is specially present in hepatocytes and to a certain extent it is present in renal tubular cells. That is why hepatocytes and renal tubular cells are able to contribute to blood glucose levels under fasting condition coming from glycogen breakdown and also note that during gluconeogenesis which is going on in the hepatocytes so the final step is conversion of glucose 6-phosphate into glucose and that is done by glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme so the correct answer for this question is option D here now going with the other choices just to uh, revise a little bit about other choices so we have option A here glycogen phosphorylase this glycogen phosphorylase is activated by glucagon under fasting condition and it helps in the breakdown of glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate. Note that glycogen is broken down by glycogen phosphorylase into glucose 1-phosphate. It adds inorganic phosphate and release glucose 1-phosphate. It means sufficient inorganic phosphate pool should be available for glycogen breakdown to occur. So just to correlate this with other disorders like hereditary fructose intolerance or the galact classical galactosemia cases where there will be trapping of inorganic phosphate. So during that condition, so the glycogen phosphorylase can decrease its uh, function because inorganic phosphate will be trapped there. So those disorders you will find hypoglycemia under fasting condition and that is in hereditary fructose intolerance and classic galactosemia. Now option B here is 4-4 transferase. Now the 4-4 transferase is a part of a debranching enzyme. Debranching enzyme is a bifunctional enzyme. It has 4-4 transferase and alpha-1,6 glucosidase that is given in option C. So these two enzymes combinedly referred as debranching enzyme so it means they help in the removal of branches during glycogen degradation and the final enzyme in option e is acid maltase acid maltase is a lysosomal enzyme and we have two lysosomal enzymes uh, especially for glycogen breakdown in the lysosome and that is acid alpha 14 glucosidase and acid alpha 16 glucosidase both are referred as acid maltase. So acid maltase, they will take care of glycogen which will be presented to lysosome. Around 1-3% to of our cellular glycogen normally will undergo degradation in lysosome with the help of acid maltase enzyme. Now let's move on to see a little bit about phosphatase enzyme. So note that glucose 6-phosphatase, it is located in the endoplasmic reticulum it is located in the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum so i'll write glucose 6 phosphatase here glucose 6 phosphatase now this is glucose 6 phosphatase is present in the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum it means glucose 6 phosphate which is produced in the cytoplasm it has to get into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum so for that we have a transporter on the endoplasmic reticulum. We refer that as T1 transporter. So the T1 transporter is going to transport glucose 6-phosphate into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. So in the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum, so the glucose 6-phosphate, that is glucose 
6 phosphate here it will be converted to glucose and inorganic phosphate pi so glucose and inorganic phosphate will be released in the presence of glucose 6 phosphatase so the glucose 6 phosphate gets into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum by t1 transporter now the inorganic phosphate that is released in the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum will move out into the cytoplasm via t2 transporter so inorganic phosphate move out here into the cytoplasm and the transporter for that is t2 transporter now there is another transporter called as t3 transporter and this t3 transporter it will transport glucose out into the cytoplasm okay so this is how t1 t2 and t3 transporters help in the transport of glucose 6 phosphate inorganic phosphate and glucose now going uh, in brief about uh, disorders associated with glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme so whenever there is a defect or deficiency in uh, glucose 6 phosphatase and that will give rise to type 1a glycogen storage disorder type 1a glycogen storage disorder we call that as one gurki disease one gurki disease that is type 1a glycogen storage disorder is because of mutation in glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme now the variant of this one gurki disease and that is type 2a sorry type 1b type 1b glycogen storage disorder is because of mutation in t1 transporter if the t1 transporter is not working so glucose 6 phosphate do not get into endoplasmic reticulum it means glucose 6 phosphatase won't be able to convert glucose 6 phosphate into glucose so all the signs and symptoms that you see in one gurki disease that is type 1a because of deficiency of glucose 6 phosphatase similar all the signs and symptoms you will see here in type 1b because of mutation in t1 transporter only the difference here between type 1a and type 1b is type 1b along with the signs and symptoms of type 1a it will have patients will have neutrophilia neutropenia neutrophil dysfunction and bleeding uh, risk of uh, bleeding okay so these are some of the signs and also I have made a video on one Gurkhi disease. I have explained in detail about type 1A and type 1B glycogen storage disorders. So the link for that video is appearing right above the corner right now. So you can click that and uh, get the details of one Gurkhi disease there. This is all about today's um, question. Thanks for watching and for regular updates you can subscribe to my channel. Take care. Bye.